Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine and welcome to Jasmine's Reading Corner. For today's Storytime Storybook, I thought I would read the book outside. So this is a Jasmine Reading Corner's first. And because we're reading outside, the book is related to nurture. To nurture, not nurture. <laughs> the book is related to nature. So the book we'll be reading is, da da da, from McDonald's Happy Meal Readers, Looking Closely Through the Forest by Frank Serafini. But before we get started, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it. So now, let's begin. Can you all see that? I hope you can. Look very closely. What do you see? Lizard tongues? Flickering flames? What could it be? What could that be? We shall soon find out. It's a sugar maple leaf. Every autumn, you can find orange, red, and yellow leaves scattered like a blanket across the forest floor. Most sugar maple leaves have five points. These bright red leaves can grow as large as an adult's hand. They fall from trees that can grow over 25 meters tall. Sugar maples get their name from their sweet sap. People drill a hole in the tree trunk to collect the sap. Then they boil it to make maple syrup. I'm from Canada and we're known for our maple syrup. Do any of you ever have it on your pancakes? Or you can mix it into some of your dishes to create a savory and sweet taste instead of using sugar or honey. So there's a tip for you. Although I'm not a big cook, that is something I know from living here in Canada. Look very closely, what do you see? A whirligig? A butterfly wing? What could it be? Hmm, what could that be? We shall soon find out. It's a seagull lily. When you walk through the forest, look closely for flowers that bloom in the spring and summer. Some wildflowers grow in the shades of the forest. Others need more sunlight to bloom. The seagull lily blooms from May to July. The cup-shaped flower grows in sunny patches in grasslands and pine forests. Its colorful insides look like the patterns of a kaleidoscope. So pretty. I love the pattern here. I wish I had that as wallpaper. Look very closely, what do you see? Flakes of oatmeal? A moldy orange? What could it be? Yep, it sort of does look like a moldy orange. <laughs> it's a spotted toadstool. Toadstools are also called mushrooms. I didn't know that. People harvest some types of mushrooms, but not all mushrooms are safe to eat or touch. It is better to simply look because many wild toadstools are poisonous. So remember that you all when you go on wilderness walks or hikes with your parents. Spotted toadstools get their name from the patterns on their caps. The small white spots are called warts. It's very pretty though. I do like that. It looks like it could be in the Smurfs. Although I get it, the Smurfs have the blue motif going on and these are orange, but it would really make their, their world more interesting, I think. Look very closely, what do you see? A cave in the snow? 
a polar bear's nose. What could it be? What could that be? What could that be? It looks like the eye of a crazy monster, I think. You're looking into the dark abyss of a crazy monster. Ah, let's find out. Oh wait, it can't be that because this book is about nature, not about crazy monsters in say a comic book perhaps. <laughs> it's an aspen tree. Aspens are deciduous trees that grow in the Rocky Mountains. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in the winter. Aspens grow in groups. Each tree in the group shares roots underground. I didn't know that. Aspen bark is smooth and hard to peel. The dark eye-shaped marks on aspen bark are called beards. Didn't know that either. Like scars, they show where a branch once fell from the tree's trunk. This would also make a great pattern for wallpaper in a room. Perhaps a den, perhaps a wilderness zen room. I once knew a guy and in his parents' penthouse, they had a zen garden with a waterfall. Yes. <laughs> Look very, oops, I should be showing this to you all. Look very closely, what do you see? Gummy candy? A bicycle tire? What could it be? What could that be? What could that be? I feel like those look like the tentacles of a squid or octopus, but I don't think tentacles are usually orange. So what could it be? Oh wait, this book is about the forest, not about creatures or animals or sea animals. So again, I'm off, I'm off there. So let's find out. Oh wait, I'm not totally off. I mean, there's, it's, it's an animal. Well, not animal, an insect. It's a yellow spotted millipede. Millipede means thousand feet. But yellow spotted millipedes have only 62. That still seems like quite a bit. They move their feet in pairs. Their legs ripple like waves when they walk. The yellow spotted millipede uses its antennae to feel its way along the forest floor. When it gets scared, it curls into a ball. Its hard shell protects it from predators. The yellow spotted millipede can also frighten enemies with a poisonous smell. Wow, a poisonous smell. I've never heard of that before. I've only heard about poisonous venom. This is very cool. Poisonous smell. The smell can kill a beetle, but it will not hurt humans. Very closely, what do you see? A tree stump? A moth wing? What could it be? Hmm. I think it looks like a shell of some sort. Maybe not a seashell, but maybe a shell for an animal. Let's find out. Oh, I am so, so wrong. It's a turkey tail fungus. Fungi grow in all types of forests around the world. They are related to mushrooms and toadstools. Fungi feed on dead plants. They recycle nutrients into the soil for other plants and trees to use. Turkey tail fungi grow like shelves on tree stumps and fallen logs. They have tough, leathery tops and soft white bellies. They are called turkey tail fungi because the stripes on top look like a turkey's tail feathers. How interesting. What a beautiful and crazy and wacky pattern that is. I'm really digging it.
Look very closely. What do you see? What do we see? What do we see? A woolly scarf? An insect leg? What could it be? What could that be? What do you all think that could be? I think it kind of looks like tempura. No, <laughs> why did I just say that? Because I really want sushi and tempura maybe. I'm very, very hungry. Let's find out. Because it kind of looks like asparagus tempura or broccoli tempura. <laughs> I'm so wrong. <laughs> it's frost on a leaf. Okay, the loud car is gone. Now I'll start again. Although there is an airplane going above me. I can hear the jet plane going by. I'm sure you all can hear it too. But I'll start reading. Early in the morning, when the weather is damp and cold, look closely at the forest floor. You might see ice crystals called frost gathered along the tiny hairs of a leaf. Frost forms on chilly mornings when moisture in the air cools very quickly. If the air is cold enough, the moisture will freeze onto grass, leaves, and twigs. Ice crystals build on top of each other to make patterns like snowflakes. When the sun warms the air, frost melts away. I'm also very familiar with frost on leaves from living in Canada. See that all the time. Look very closely, what do you see? Chocolate chips? Oh, that would be awesome. A pineapple? Yeah, that could be the side of a pineapple. Maybe SpongeBob SquarePants house. <laughs> what a good joke, I am so funny. <laughs> What could it be? Let's find out. It's a pine cone. So I was totally, totally off. Pine cones come in all shapes and sizes. Some of the biggest evergreen trees, like the mighty sequoia, can have the smallest pine cones. Closed pine cones hang from tree branches. They look like they are covered in hard fish scales. The scales protect a tree's seeds until they are ready to grow. Open pine cones have already let their seeds go. I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Each seed has a wing that helps it float to the ground. I also didn't know that. A pine cone has a wing that helps it float to the ground. What part of the pine cone is that? Hmm. I will have to check closely the next time I'm around pine cones. I think you all will have to check too if you remember this, because I do not know what part of a pine cone is a wing. Interesting. Look very closely. What do you see? A brass button? A dragon's eye? What could it be? Have any of you ever seen Jurassic Park or any of the sequels in that movie franchise? I think it looks like one of the dinosaurs in there. Maybe a raptor coming to get us. Dun, dun, dun. Let's find out. It's a green frog. Okay, that's great. It's not a raptor. <laughs> Phew. Frogs live near ponds, lakes, and streams in the forest. They can be hard to find because they sit very still when hunting. Frogs flip out their long, sticky tongues to grab flies, spiders, and even snails. Ooh. Although they are called green frogs, they can be brown, green, or even blue. Have any of you ever seen a blue frog? Have I ever seen a blue frog? Mm, no, I don't think I have. Maybe on a nature show or on National Geographic or on one of those BBC Planet Earth series or Netflix Planet Earth series, <laughs> but not in person. Green frogs use their color to hide from... Green frogs use their color to hide from birds, snakes, and raccoons. Their large eyes 
bulge out so they can see in many directions. I didn't know that. That's the reason why their eyes can bulge out to see in many directions at the same time. That is an amazing feature to have. I would love to have that, especially when I'm on my cell phone and wanting to watch TV at the same time and on my laptop at the same time. Oh, the times we live in. Oh, and that's the end. Thank you for joining me for story time at Jasmine's Reading Corner. If there are any books you would like me to check out, please email me or contact me through my Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter handles, Twitter handles. And I'd also appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel by hitting on the subscribe button. Until next time.